everybody. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Sisters podcast, where we give you our point of view. I'm your host, Tamia Harper, and I'm here today with a very special, 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 special episode of Sci-Fi Sisters. I'm joined by my sister, Yvette Blackman Tom. Hello. Sabrina Wood. Whoop whoop. And Fran T. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> and we have we have on this special edition of our show two of our very dear friends who we love so much and uh they were the first ones to say hey sci-fi sisters do you want to come be part of our convention and then from there great things happen so we love them forever and ever they are the people behind science division the makers of the world's only app enabled triple which many of you i know have adopted they are kalia and jay zawacki Yay. Welcome, guys. Yay. We love you, too, so oh. very much. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys, and um, it's important. We wanted to have you guys on the show because you guys have made this big decision um, not to continue with your license, uh, your official Star Trek license to manufacture the triples. And these triples have made a big deal in a lot of people's lives. I have adopted two. And they've changed my life. One is Peanut Hamper, and the other one is Peanut Knickknack. <laughs> and Knickknack. So oh, both you still have some names. of the best names we've heard. <laughs> <This is wonderful. laughs> my little brown, my little brown one is Peanut Hamper, and my big gray is Knickknack. Is Knickknack. Uh, so you know, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about how Science Division and the Tribbles came about, and a little bit about what your journey has been. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Science Division really came out of really just kind of a childhood dream of owning a Tribble. Uh, I am not original in that by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I grew up watching the original series with my dad. He had every episode on VHS tape. You know, he'd watched it in syndication as a kid. He just barely missed the original you know, run of it when it was airing. Um but the first episode he showed his two little girls to get them into Star Trek was the trouble with Tribbles because small furry animals that scream at people that they don't like is a <laughs> great way to get kids excited about a show. Um, and I just desperately wanted one. And uh, at the time, you couldn't even go on and you know Google it. Or, you know, you couldn't even get on yeah. the internet if mom was on the phone. Uh, but <laughs> That's right. I <laughs> had no way to get one. So I did what most kids did and sewed my own from some faux fur. It was actually left over from a bunny uh, costume, costume from Halloween. Yeah. Um, and so I sewed a little white one and I named it Snow Puff and it had a little adoption certificate and that Aww. was my very first Tribble. And I just kept thinking as I got older and technology was advancing that, you know, somebody would create one that felt like a real pet. And there were some that were out there and I was never satisfied with them. Um, and so I finally just decided, we decided let's just try to make one. You know, uh, our background is in theater design. We're makers. We've just figured, you know, I, maybe we can just learn how to code and we'll figure it out. And so <laughs> that's what I did. I went on the internet and said, please teach me how to code. <laughs> Essentially, um, the Arduino microcontroller is an open source platform. Mm -hmm. So there's a ton of tutorials, lots of people who have done this really amazing job of making this kind of stuff accessible to people. Um, I had a little done a little bit of HTML coding. I know just enough to kind of get myself in trouble. So I kind of was able to, you know, once you pick up how the computer is kind of thinking, then you the it's easy enough to get it to, you know, do the things you want it to do. So uh, we sat down, brainstormed what was it that we wanted it to do, and then figured out which components we needed to make that happen. And then I would go and I would find kind of existing test code to get each piece to work. And then I would write the code to get them to talk to each other. And then, you know, so, you know, you start with a speaker and then you get that hooked up to uh, the SD card so that you can play sound off of it. And you get that hooked up to the accelerometer. So when you move it, it will play the sound and all of this kind oh, of wow. stuff. And so I wrote, essentially, it's a series of if this, then that algorithms. Um, and then this really tricky thing called an interrupt. So no matter where you are in the code, 
you can make it scream, which is essentially where the make it scream on command function is in the app. Um, and so to get that interrupt to work, we needed this really fancy itty bitty component called a Schmidt trigger. <laughs> so, so when That's you say itty bitty, we, we had to find this component. Uh, I think we had to find it on eBay it or something. It was eBay. Yeah, we couldn't um, find it anywhere. But, you know, when she says small, like we mean small. It was like the size of a pin, like a millimeter wide. And it oh, has wow. six little wires off of it that all have to get soldered onto the onto the uh, breadboard and onto the components. Yeah. I I have done it successfully twice, <laughs> unsuccessfully once, and I hope to never do it again. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> for our little prototypes. This very patient man got a pile <laughs> of wires and pieces and breadboards that you use for prototyping uh, the size of a card table. And I said, make it fit in this little box. And he figured out how to do that and solder it all together. And there were, you know, draftings and layouts and all kinds of stuff. Um, and he figured out how to get it all in this little Pelican case. And I figured out how to sew the bodies. And I sat there and I hand stitched those tribbles until I think it was wow. Valentine's Day was coming up. And Jay goes, listen, I want to get you something for Valentine's Day, but I just I don't want you to take it the wrong way. <laughs> what is uh -oh. it? And he goes, I really want to buy you a sewing machine, but there's no message implied. I just think you could use one. I was like, trying to make your life easier. <laughs> I was like, yes, there you, you go. buy me a sewing machine. <laughs> and so, yeah, we made the first ones just at home for ourselves. Uh, yeah, I think that wow. was a key, key takeaway. Like, we did this because we really wanted one. Like there was no plan for a business. There is no plan to make more than one mm -hmm. ever, you know? Um, and, you know, once we had made one, it was really, really fun to just hold and, you know, like yeah. play with and hand it across to your friends and stuff. And then, you know, people started asking like, can we have one? And we were like, <laughs> well, not really these, you know, all the components, it, it costs like $150, $200, you know, for the to buy all the parts individually. And it's many, many hours. I mean, I think to solder it all together, it was, you know, 40 hours or something. Yeah. And um, you did a beautiful job, but it's still something like, that causes TSA a little <laughs> bit of pause. It, when looks, you fly. <laughs> it looks very homegrown, um, you know, so it, it wasn't something that we could just like make a few of, um, no. but you know, so a lot then, of people were really excited about it. So then how did you guys get from doing like a one-off to being able to produce so many of them and then yeah. and get to like, the, you know, like, okay, we need to start a business. This is kind yeah. of a weird, you know, enough people had asked and been excited about it that we went, you know what, we have something cool. We have something that we know people want. I think we had gone to the, um, the convention in, in New York for the 50th, the 50th anniversary one, yeah. of the Mission New York. And we heard all these people talking about how they wish they had a real triple. And we're like, oh, we have one at home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were, I think we were working on it. It was yeah. kind of an idea at the time. Um, it was still components. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so we actually found this uh, company in, they, they're not there anymore. I think they've retired. Um, but there's a company in Connecticut that did consulting. It was a couple of guys who had worked for major toy companies, Hasbro and other different toy companies. So they had been doing it for decades. And they had a service where it was like a one-time, very small fee. You go and you talk to them and, you know, you meet under an NDA just to sort of it wasn't really necessary for us. But it was just, you know, yeah. part of the process. And you say, oh, we've made this thing. Uh, is this something that can be produced and marketed and how does that work? And then, of course, the licensing was a whole other issue that we knew we would have to contend with. Uh, and they were like, we've never seen people walk in with just a prototype like this that's this far along that, you know, they just made at their house. <laughs> yeah, they, they they did a lot of, you know, ideas. People would come to them with ideas and they would say, this is foolish or like, let's try to prototype this. Yeah. And, you know, they had wow. like back rooms and they had just, you know, back people room. at desks that had blocks of Legos and wires and like they would like make different prototyping things right there. Um, but we were almost further along than anyone else who would really go there. Um, so they gave us some really good advice and like how to, you know, take some next steps. Yeah. I think some of, you know, 
the the numbers of how many triples we would have to produce and stuff i think took us a little bit aback of like whoa and this is a lot order. a lot bigger than we ever you know thought it would be well and their advice was find someone else who already has a license mm -hmm. and see if you can work with them or sell the idea to them you know you've got it was working product yeah show it to some folks who have a license and see if they want to pick it up. And after some searching and reaching out, we did actually find a company who was really interested. Um, and they were the ones that set us up with the licensing, the head of licensing for Star Trek. Um, in, and we met with her over top us in New York because everyone was there for the New York Toy Fair. Mm -hmm. So it was this crazy mm -hmm. thing because first of all, I'm like, I don't know how to order that. But we're going to have to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got there, we took this prototype and she didn't want to let it go. She yeah. was like, you have oh, to wow. do this. We turned it on. She just, the entire meal, it just sat in her lap and she like pet it. <laughs> yeah. wow. Well, she really wasn't cling on, right? <laughs> no, no, she was not. Um, and so she said, you know, go figure this out. And the biggest question was kind of the app, right? You know, uh, it was still pretty new. It is still pretty new uh, in terms of, you know, people who are manufacturing products, trying to figure out what that technology aspect of it looks like. And so we started reaching out and trying to find folks to kind of handle that. And uh, as that time kind of passed, the company just decided, you know what, we don't want to deal with that aspect of it we don't want to get into technology we don't want to get into apps best of luck you know hopefully you can find someone else and the licensing director essentially went what would it take for you to just do it mm -hmm. <laughs> as yeah. us yeah. essentially and and we it came to this point where it was like if this was going to move forward that was what we were going to have to do was form a business and you know get an attorney and have them help us through that process and get an app developer and all of this crazy stuff and I don't know why we decided it was a good or reasonable <laughs> idea but we did it <laughs> with a lot of help from people around us mm -hmm. uh, in terms of resources financially and time uh, a ton of folks in the toy manufacturing industry gave their time to the project because they just they thought it was cool and they remembered being small business you know startups um we have found that that industry is really very giving um mm. that people are happy to help we had somebody help us generate our barcodes and get through all you know different hoops uh another entity translated the manual into French for us because our license was originally for the U.S. and Canada before Canada changed their tax collection laws. Um, and so that had to be in English and in French. Uh, so we got our relationship with our manufacturer through this uh, consultant company that we had originally gone and met with. They go, we, they said, we have this great manufacturer. It's one that Disney works with. Like they do a great job. This is going to be someone who will take your product and do a good job with it rather than make a lot of things cheaply. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. we spent a year working on, you know, I sent here are the algorithms. There were, if this, then that, There's huge flow charts. spreadsheets mm -hmm. and flow charts. Yeah. This is what the one that I made is doing. Mm -hmm. And they created the electronics and wrote the code in a more stable coding language and then they would send it to us and we would test it. And we worked with the our app developer and we would test it with the app. And so and that, that took it took a year to do that and then yeah. get it all yeah. through product testing. So it's tested for all ages in US and Canada, every kind of you know restriction or law that you have to meet as a toy manufacturer. They all had went through that process. We learned wow. a ton about that. Uh and then eventually got them here. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Phew. Wow. And then I and then I got peanut hamper. <laughs> who also often sits in my lap and just purrs like and you know what's so cool about it is like I don't live with a pet right now. Like I it's a, probably the first time in my life where I have been petless. Like there's no dog, no cat, no nothing in my house. And let me tell you, these tribbles have really been comforting when you just like need some furry comfort and like something to cuddle up to and you know especially like through the pandemic too like it's been really Aww. it's been a tough time these tribbles have been friends for people you know mm -hmm. 
I love my triples. I tell you, I can't I sing the praises of my triples all the time. Very kind. Thank you. It's good to hear. So we get to that you you guys are selling these triples and now people are knowing science division triples and people are adopting them. You're going to conventions, you're working all over the place. How is that part for you? Love that part. It, yeah, it's been fantastic. If you we know. could just do Star Trek <laughs> conventions, that would be great. <laughs> Aww, yeah. I mean, part of it was we got inventory right as the shutdown started march of 2020 so oh, like, gosh. We, oh, you know they PTSD. were they were coming and we were trying to figure out logistics of you know a truck coming and like unloading we weren't sure we were going to be able to leave our house under lockdown orders to go pick them up yeah wow. we, were, we were really worried wow. that like police were going to pull us over and like <laughs> not allow us to get there they were stuff. stopping yeah they, it was, know, i think right um, before they started actually stopping people yeah wow. um and originally we were going to rent warehouse space but then we didn't know if we'd be able to leave and get to it so we cleared mm-hmm. everything out of the basement and at the time it was people still weren't sure if they should be opening packages yeah no one you know how, how, how is this something. thing transmitted yeah. right mm-hmm. so we literally went picked all this stuff up in a box truck we borrowed from a friend brought it back to our garage and left it in the garage for two weeks <laughs> before we went and processed it all yeah. so that we could start shipping them to people, you know, yeah. and we were doing like the mass, like trying to be as safe as possible to be making sure that we couldn't be transmitting anything to anybody, mm-hmm. but they right. were still getting their triples because the presale had started in Vegas, you know, yeah. before. Yeah. And then that because of the pandemic, there had been, shutdowns and there had been major delays in the manufacturing and so by the time we had them and they'd been through their little triple quarantine and all of that mm-hmm. it was time to get them out to people right. <laughs> yeah i mean we the the last legs of the manufacturing for those first tribbles like you know they where they're produced that was hit harder way before we you know had anything like we were just hearing about it on the news yeah but like we were trying to like figure out like is the factory going to be able to ship them out? And and like, yeah. are they going to just lock the doors three days before they're ready to go? You know, mm-hmm. so there was a lot of late nights and like, will the port be open? Yeah. Will there be enough employees mm-hmm. there to receive the cargo? Ah, will there be a truck available to get it to mm-hmm. us? And it was the first time we'd done any of it. I am not an import <laughs> export logistics expert. <laughs> yeah, as we said, just get them here. <laughs> we, st- we started working in the theater, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're artists first and foremost. <laughs> they showed up. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. So, but yeah, now have... that we've been able to go back to conventions, it's it's been so wonderful to actually interact with folks and in person. Yeah. And, oh, it's been wonderful. Yeah. I mean, do people tell you their triple stories all the time? We do. Those are the best emails. Yeah. You know, um, more often than not, emails that come into the customer service inbox are, hey, I got my triple and here's the thing that happened. Um, when we started, I mean, we shipped a whole bunch of them out because we fulfilled all those pre-orders right at the beginning. And someone sent us a picture of it. Uh, it the mailman had like strapped it to the outside of their mailbox, but their mailbox <laughs> was this giant Star Trek mailbox. Oh, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> This picture being oh, like it couldn't fit strapped. inside so yeah. it, like the mailman had like oh. it on to the mailbox <laughs> that is so cool <laughs> i've actually met those folks at conventions now you know mm-hmm. we've seen them they're like we're the mailbox people oh, <laughs> oh that's so cool it is that's awesome <laughs> i love so oh my gosh so now we're at a point where you guys are saying okay we're not going to renew our license so talk to us about that. What went into that decision? Yeah, yeah. It was a difficult one, for sure. Um, we originally signed with CBS, who then merged with Viacom, and our license was originally extended a year under Viacom. So we actually originally were only supposed to do it through 2022, and we ended up signing again with them to do it through 2023. And now they've merged with Paramount. Mm. Uh, and We actually have a really great contact that we've been working with at Paramount. He's great. Um, The system, it's a much larger entity that has a more corporate structure to it. 
And so some of the, you know, upfront guarantees and the licensing rates and some of that stuff are higher than they were when we originally signed. Mm -hmm. And that coupled with it being much harder and much more expensive to do the import and the export right now and the tax rules and just different mm -hmm. things are ever changing. And it's very difficult as a small business to keep up with all of that. And we both also have full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. this is something you know. that we're doing in addition to science division. And we kind of got to this point where we looked at it and we looked at how much we were going to have to raise prices to continue to, you know, cover those costs. And it got to the point where it wasn't going to be sharing this great thing we made with fans anymore. It was going to be, how do we, you know, sell enough of these fast enough and at high enough price to justify the cost of placing more orders. Mm -hmm. And when it started to be something that was going to be have to become about money and the numbers, we looked at it and went, we've had a great run. We've had lots of fun. Mm -hmm. We've shared this. Let's just go out on a high, essentially, celebrate what we achieved, make them available as long as possible under our contract for people, let them know they have a chance now to get them. And then, you know, just be happy we did it. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm happy you did it. Me too. I'm happy <laughs> you did it. We are hat. too. Oh, yeah, we are we're really... thrilled. Wouldn't do it any differently. But... It's an incredible story. That's... It is an incredible story. And I think that's one of yeah. the reasons why I was so um, enamored of you guys, especially when we first met you all. We knew that your hearts are just these big, beautiful, wonderful hearts. But, you know, the thing, and it comes through in the product and the way you ran the company. And I know your one of your taglines is by fans for fans, mm -hmm. you know, and Aww. that's why we all would love supporting you guys so much because you're, you're us, you know, it's not like, it's not like it's some big corporate company, you know, toy manufacturer coming in and saying like, Hey, we made this thing for you at Star Trek people <laughs> and we're going to charge you an arm and a limb for right. it, you know? <laughs> That's our Paramount voice. <laughs> From the mountain top. From the mountain. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, that's, that's a, that's one of the beautiful things. So, you know, that we love about it. So I want people to be able to know about the specials that you have going on now, because you only have until what time to liquidate your stock. I mean, that you can like, no, not liquidate the stock, but basically you can only continue to do this um, until when the end of March, right? The end of March. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And wow. we, we do have a few more than we'll probably be able to sell by then. So we'll probably end up keeping a few for us to get through the end of March and moving the rest, you know, we, to one of our wholesale partners. So they'll be available at some point. We have no control of when, where, how, or what that price point is, you know, um, but we'll have some either through the end of March or until the stock that we hold on to. Mm -hmm. is is sold out and the, yeah. the reason we're doing we're holding on to some is we want to be able to continue to make them available to people as long as possible where we know it's us that are combing them out and making them fluffy before they get to you and you know they come on from you us. you just talked about something that is so key to these triples like when you mm -hmm. see these that they're not like little matted pieces of fur you know <laughs> like you guys spent you groom yeah. them like mm -hmm. if you, you guys if you're listening and you've ever watched well, like the the uh the kennel club like the akc dog shows or anything and you see like back <laughs> behind stage and the pets are being like blow dried and combed and fluffed and groomed jay you're the master groomer are you not or is it a is it a well i've, I've never is had both of you guys title before no, he, um, is, he is the master groomer, <laughs> master groomer. I, I hand comb out every triple that comes through um it it's at least 10 minutes per triple of of dedication, making sure that everything looks good and is ready to go. And they get uh, a little bit of a blow dry at the end to uh, fluff them back up and <laughs> then they get chipped out. Well, yeah. your beard, well, your beard shows us that you know how to handle <laughs> fluffing out hair. Yes. <laughs> it's fantastic, by the way. It is. And Thank the, you. the dog You're show welcome. is very funny because it is a dog grooming comb that he yeah. uses. <laughs> As it should be. Our manufacturer does great work. You know, they come and they're well made and we could ship them out the way that they ship out, but we like to just know 
yeah, that we put eyes top. on it. Mm -hmm. It's in good shape, mm -hmm. and you're getting one that we can be proud of. Yeah, the mm -hmm. so, personal touch. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. So let let folks know what what uh, what deals you've got going, and uh, for them to tr get their official tribble if they want and i'm calling on everybody to adopt their tribble before the end of march i mean you don't know how good your life will be once you get your tribble trust me <laughs> yeah yeah um so we have set all of our, our our standard shipping in the u.s is free so we're not charging for shipping at this point anymore um we also have uh, Shopify now offers a payment plan, so your payment can be split into four payments to make it easier, and there's no interest on any of that from what I understand. When I looked at it and I did the math, they just break it up into four payments, and you're paying the amount that you're paying, uh, that, that the price is. And we have marked everything down, so triples are back down to their pre-order price that they were in when we first started. They were 59 wow. Dollars. Wow. And so right now the standard size tribbles are $59 because that's where they started and where we would have liked to keep them priced had the economy not been the way it was. And, you know, it, it was way more expensive to get the silver ones made than the brown ones. Mm -hmm. But yeah. at this point we have them and we want other people to have them. So we've done that. And then we have some bundles available. So if you get two of them, uh, they're even a little bit cheaper. I think it's $50 each if you get a bundle yep. of two. And I think we're looking at maybe adding a bundle of three as well, just to make it easy for folks to, you know, get as many triples as they want. <laughs> I mean, the, the bottom line is we want people to to know that they're available right now. Um, we have, you know, there, there's been things in the past that we've missed out on just because we didn't know. So we want to just, you know, let everyone know that we still have some order them now. And if they know anyone who might want one, pass along the message. You know, it's not like we want to just like, you have to order all these triples. It, it's like, we really want, if people want them, we want to let them know that they're available. Yeah, right. Um, and they won't they, they don't, because we don't know when after March, after the end of March, we don't know when they would be available again from some other vendor at what price. Right. So if you want right. to get one yeah. right now, from Jay and Kaylea, the the creators, the creators, the <laughs> creators, <laughs> and, and you want it brushed out and blow dry, you got to get it now. So I'm a master groomer. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we have some great wholesale partners, and none of them, you know, sure. have ever been ripping people off with their prices, you know. But you know, we they they get them, it costs them a little bit more than it costs us, and so just right. the way that the business works. You know, hey, things eggs end up are, being eggs at eight ninety nine a dozen. So you know, we get it. This is going to be. It's not yeah. what it was two years ago. So yeah. jar mayonnaise, a big jar of mayonnaise, it's five dollars and forty nine cents. So yeah, so you a see triple. What I'm saying? Don't eat mayonnaise. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like mayonnaise. Oh okay. God, no. Yeah, I love it. And then made from it, and like I figured it, it out. I'm like. Okay, they're made from eggs. That's why it's like um, you're almost right. Six so it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So now the, there are different sizes of triples, correct? You still have there is one giant limited ah. edition triple left. Ooh, just, I knew that. Uh, that's wait, why just I one? Asked that. Like one? One. Just one. 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 That's we have three hundred, and we've kept a few for us because mm -hmm. we keep a few from each run for our own kind of you know archive mm -hmm. uh, and then you, we send one a couple to paramount and various things uh so of out of those 300 there is one left oh, of like the mother hoarder so okay. <laughs> i want that so that's one the, that's can the i get that one, one? Yeah, the, you better put your good. order in, yeah. girl. I want my, oh, I want that one. Go All ahead. Right, let me tell you, you there better... are zero giant tribbles left. <laughs> you better go to science. Div. I'm, I'm, I'm writing it. I'm writing down the info as they give it right now. <laughs> okay, folks. <laughs> but giant tribble is gone. Sciencediv.com. <laughs> and we do also have a special code for the Sci-Fi Sisters. So Yay! We have collected a whole bunch of really great Star Trek stuff from you know the various conventions that we've gone to and some of the things you know people have given us things and we have one already so we have essentially a goodie basket of star trek merchandise so if people order on our website and use the code sci-fi sisters we will throw in 
a Star Trek merchandise item, so you'll get a mystery, fun kind of Star Trek item that comes Uh-oh. with your troll. See, that, I love that. That's I like a it. nice special gift, right? I like it. It's yeah. a win-win. It is. It really is. Tell us the, um, tell us the, tell us where to order. <laughs> ScienceDiv.com. Yep. D-I-V, short for division. Okay. Got it. Get Folks. your creator version triple a mystery <laughs> gift from the it. master groomer from the master groomer and now i gotta come up with a name better than and and Hammer. <laughs> oh, no, no, i can't mean, do it it's impossible to you might to, have to, to put it. that note put that, that yeah you know, once you, know. you get it once you get it and hold it yeah it will speak to me it will mm-hmm. speak to me so like when i, I buy it. clothes they speak to me <laughs> It'll yeah. pour at mm-hmm. least. So <laughs> I did want to mention that. So I've I've bought I think three triples and they all went to my my children. Um, but I bought a big the big silver one for uh, my youngest Lily because this year she's actually does not have a roommate at college, and we always have a dog. So you know, honey, our dog always hangs out with Lily, but now she's alone. So I sent her. Uh, a furry tribble but she you know she's a she's she's a star trek fan she tells everybody i don't want i'm not a star trek fan but she knows every episode right so (laughs) she's such a fan right she comes in the room she goes oh i've seen that one already you know you're not a fan fan. but so she has her tribble it actually i went when we went to go visit her i was like oh where's your tribble she goes oh it's in my bed and i was like Wow, because the only oh. only thing she had before was Pooh, you Aww. know. But Pooh is here. I I went upstairs and Pooh was in her I'm bed. Sure she's but... gonna be so pleased to let everybody know that you're telling about about Pooh. So, <laughs> as, as I said it, I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> no, I, had, I had a Pooh Lily, on that my bed at, it was when I was auntie, in college okay? too." <laughs> but uh, she does have peanut. Oh, peanut hammer. She has her triple. <laughs> She has her triple in her bed. So I want to thank you because, you know, um, you know, college is stressful, you know, and Lily has the schedule of a saint. I don't even know how she does it, but uh, it definitely helps, you know, it's, it's, you know, just stroking it, you know, just make it something cuddly that she doesn't have her dog. You know, it's a good substitute. So just wanted to put that out there that uh, if you know someone that has anxiety um, or just needs the comfort of something, but can't have a, a pet at the time. You know, it's 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 a it's a nice little thing to give someone uh, who might be able to you know get some relief from the stress of the day. So it mm-hmm. th- it's it's not just because it's a tribble, but it can help uh, people going through uh, certain things. So I yeah. just want to put that out there. Absolutely, that's mm-hmm. so true. Mm-hmm. And then I know, you know, one of the things I think uh, is important to let people know is that the app, just because your license is is expiring, is going to expire, like doesn't mean that the app is going anywhere. The app is going to be continue to function and be downloadable, and you know, keep working, right? Yeah, it is uh, written into our contract. I spent quite a bit of time verifying this in the last few months. Uh, (laughs) But as long as we're not profiting off of it, we can continue to have it be functional and maintain it. So we're actually working right now on pushing out another update just to get it onto the latest operating systems. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Android, you have to be within two years of the latest operating system. And so we're coming Mm. up on that. So we're trying to ha- get it through at least another round of updates because then it should be good for another three years before we would have to even think about messing with it again. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So it would be me with the Android. All right. So you want you, you want to have make sure that things still purring and screaming and <laughs> going on. <laughs> well, the other the thing is, you know, part. they will. We did design them so no matter what, your triple still works without the app. Without so it. all of that functionality, the yep. different modes you have. Access, access to without the app you can still have it you know put it in that watchdog mode and somebody yeah, okay. it'll scream at them that was also kind of an accessibility thing too we wanted people who didn't have a phone or didn't want to mess around with a phone people who saw the show originally and still had a flip phone or you know anything like that there's oh, a whole girl. range of, of people who you know, 
we had people at conventions, you know, who yeah. came up and they're like, I don't have a phone or I don't mm-hmm. use a phone. And and so, and, and it's and young people have said, we, yeah. I don't have a phone or I don't use a phone. Yeah. Uh, and so we wanted it to be something that anybody could play with. Uh, mm-hmm. So it does, it functions both ways. And then the app lets you do things like hand it to your buddy and make it scream, which <laughs> is actually. <laughs> Oh, I've had some fun with that. I too. know. <laughs> <laughs> that was all your dad's that idea. That was dad's idea. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. okay. The yeah. Tribbles yeah. have an app because when we were talking about building our own Tribble and the things it would need to do, mm-hmm. my dad, with his sense of humor, which Sabrina has experienced. Hi, dad. <laughs> <laughs> was like, well, you have to be able to prank people with it. You know, you got to make it scream at people. <laughs> so we're sitting there going, how are we going to do that? And Jay's just like, now we have to build an app. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wanted, I also wanted to let people know that the reason, like, we're not up here just trying to do a big commercial, like, you know, these people are our friends, and we want to help them out. But also, more importantly, they have done a great service for the Star Trek family, uh, and for the Star Trek world. So we really wanted to make sure that everybody knew, because I know that a lot of people have seen, uh, heard, seen ads for Science Division, or seen Jay and Kalia on different shows, um, or on YouTube or met them at conventions and maybe might not have have said like, oh, okay, that sounds like a great idea and I really want to get one and then haven't gotten one yet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just want to let you guys know that now is the time to do it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now is the time to do it. I mean, their wholesale partners are going to have some for a little while. Yeah. You know, I mean, as long as there's a little bit of stock, but that stock is not going to last forever. Um, So, you know, the the sci-fi sisters are not in the business of doing a bunch of ads all the time, but we are in the business of lifting up the Trek family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's what we feel these triples have done for us. I know that they've done that for me personally, you know, and, 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 and made a whole bunch of friends in the, in the, in the meantime. Well, well Kaylea and Jay are family. Um, mm-hmm. That's just all it is. I mean, we, when we see each other, it's like, oh, there's the cousins, you know, <laughs> it's that kind of thing. So we're doing this for our family and making sure that people can, like I said, you know, it's a good deal. It's not just a toy. There's other aspects you can use this for. You'll have it forever. It brings joy. Look at Tamia calling it Peter Hamper and Knickknack. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we all know that um, we love Tribbles. It's a Star Trek thing. This part of the family. So like you said, it's not a commercial. Just letting you know what's out there. Um, use Sci-Fi Sisters and you get yourself a nice little bundle. Um, it's it's great all around. Everybody. And, an, <laughs> and another reason why you can get it, this may be far-fetched, but some places charge you like a deposit. If you live in an apartment building, they charge you a deposit to have an animal, to have a cat mm-hmm. or a dog. And then you have to pay more per month to have yep. a pet, yep. right? Pet, pet rent. Yep. Yes, yes. Sure yes. And I really don't want to do that. So, <laughs> triple, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> we did treat them with Dr. McCoy's serum to prevent them from multiplying. So, you're oh, safe there. Oh, yeah. great. Thank yeah. you. So if you watch the animated series episode, McCoy actually invents a serum that yes. prevents them from, from replicating. So, when we did mm-hmm. the adoption certificates for them, so the giant ones have adoption certificates that are numbered. Mm-hmm. And when we did the pre orders for the tan ones, Anyone who pre-ordered got an adoption certificate, and it, you know, on the bottom, you know, it's illegal to breed tribbles in <laughs> space, and unauthorized breeding is known. Like, there's this whole, you know, federation as warning <laughs> about tribble breeding. Yeah. For the backstory. Oh my gosh, Trekkies, Trekkies, Trekkies! I love you guys. <laughs> you I love us. I thing. love us. The yeah, app. there is lore in the app too. We yeah. had this whole backstory in our own heads. It <laughs> never really went anywhere. Everyone just taps through it. And if you matter. watch the original video oh, that no, I recorded love that. with my dad, my dad is Admiral Dunzel, and he's informing you that you've been recruited by <laughs> Starfleet for a covert mission. And so that's where the name Section K7 comes from. So it's a <laughs> nod to Section 31 and the space station. Space. The idea is that you're working with 
tribal agents to identify uh, enemy Klingons. So they're essentially Klingon dissidents who don't believe we should be at peace. So <laughs> you and your tribal are going out looking for these Klingon dissidents out in the Federation that as part of the so Section K-7 problem. team. That, yeah, that definitely sounds like a father. <laughs> that should be written down. It should be a book. That should be your next, <laughs> next project. Some fan fiction, tribal yep. fan fiction. Well, I people love can it. Go to our YouTube channel. They can comment on that video. Yeah, that's if they want cool. to <laughs> we get enough of those. Okay. Maybe we'll we'll you know do another little what? mini. Episode. You have and you have a so you have is it science division is your trouble uh, your trouble channel your um YouTube channel <laughs> yeah yeah it is and it's okay. it's this whole it's like two minutes long we were brand new nobody's ever gonna watch a two minute video you know which is this whole thing like here's how to play with it and scientists have created um, translations I watched copy. that two minute video <laughs> what, what are you talking to Trekkies what are you talking about <laughs> of we are. Come on. you should know better Star Trek. <gasps> This is your, this is head, you think it's your head cannon? It's all of our head cannon. What are you talking it's like, about? It's like, ooh, squirrel. Right. <laughs> Trek? Trek? You of us Trek? dressed as scientists <laughs> with gloves and we're developing the technology for your pad so you can talk to your tribble. It's just wow. like translation software. <laughs> I'll be watching that it's the so minute this ago. is over. <laughs> <laughs> well, all be going. It's really good. It's really <laughs> good. It's really funny too. I love it. <laughs> we have a music video in there too. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, when we did, yeah, because we we did a triple presale video. Yeah. <laughs> That was this whole thing. Okay. <laughs> so it was supposed to be a parody to the final countdown, but it was the triple presale. And then we couldn't. So we had we had music made and we recorded the parodies, the voice and everything. And we dressed up with our best friends as like 80s, as an 80s rock band, essentially, and had tribbles playing instruments <laughs> and all of these things. Tribbles on the drum. It was on great. the drum. Yeah. Oh my God. And, I love it. And then we could it didn't get approved because CBS didn't want us to do a parodies so they said they don't like oh. it when people parody their stuff so they didn't want this at the time we couldn't get it approved. so then i did a voice over like william shatner style where i just spoke the lyrics <laughs> to the song, used the same footage and music oh God. and we had zero followers at the time because we did you know the pre-sale started at las yeah. vegas and nobody knew who we were, so we posted it, and nobody ever really watched it or knew of its existence. <laughs> but it's out there somewhere. It's out there. <laughs> it's probably oh, we're better. gonna find it. You we're know. gonna find. Yeah, it. we are gonna find we're it. Gonna find that thing. <laughs> you, you know, and I want people to know too that, like, uh, another reason why um, Science Division is uh, so important to us is that when the Sci Fi Sisters, when we very, very literally first got together and started, I mean, we had been together for what two weeks, maybe. Wait. Right. You know, it was really um, new. It was really new. We, were, we were really, really new. I mean, we were. It was like maybe a month or so. Like you know, it was like a little bit. We were still mad at the at that time, actually. Right, we were still <laughs> mad about everybody trying to dis um oh, disco so and Sonequa. That's right. And uh, you know, so we we hadn't like it started is. a podcast yet. Uh, we had started our Facebook group, The Mothership, um, and we had a page up and we said, you know, the pandemic had happened and we were like, well, what are we going to do? We can't go to conventions. And so everybody at that time was looking for a way to do something in fandom and bring us together, you know, uh, in fandom. So we we're like, OK, we're going to do a salon, a series of sci-fi sisters salon. salons mm -hmm. where we get together and we basically discuss the things that we would be talking about at a convention if we were pitching a convention panel let's just talk about it and we got you know a group of people and I put it up in uh one of the groups maybe Camp Kittimer and then I took it down really fast because I was like oh, we're not ready I don't I'm afraid to open <laughs> this up to other people yet you know and in the and it was literally only the post was up for five minutes in that five minutes Kalia saw the post and goes and sent me a message and says, hey, I saw your post. We're doing a convention, a virtual convention. Would you guys like to be a part of it? Now, we at this time, we did not know Kalia and Jay. This is how we met. That She just randomly saw this post that was up for five minutes and no longer. <laughs> and then the rest was history. And we said, Sure. I said, Sabrina, Fran, these people want us to be part of their convention. I was like, how cool is like, that? What? What are we going to do? Like, what? <laughs> what? What is it? What's going on? So, Kate 
Maria and Jay, tell us a, a little bit before we go about like how you guys came up with the idea for virtual TrekCon, because that's where we all met and, and friendship and love bloomed. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it came out of that whole, you know, the triples arrived and we're, we're supposed to be out celebrating with people. Also, we have all these triples. We need to sell them to people. You know? <laughs> there was both both things were going on. Um, and I was just starting to kind of get involved in the Trek community. Um, that was a new thing for me. And we're event people. You know, I project manage live events for a living. And we went, mm. people need a place to gather. We have the skills to make that happen. We're brand new. We have no followers, but let's just, let's give it a go. And let's reach out to the folks that we know. Let's reach out to folks we don't know. And so we kind of brainstormed, you know, how can we create a vendor type space? And I was doing my graduate degree at the time and everything was on Zoom. So I was getting familiar sort of with that platform. And so we kind of figured out, all right, so we have everybody create their Zoom meeting and we create a virtual vendors room where you have the information for people and you have their meeting link and you can just get in there and you talk to people. And then a couple of people reached out and said, hey, I'd like to do a panel. How do you feel about that? And that got added on. Um, and so that was kind of how the Connected Community Con got born was that, you know, we this idea that we would create a space where we could gather and it would also create a space where people who normally sell their wares have an opportunity to do that and it was also it was artists and it was cosplayers um you know hen in a hat she came and she led a zoom meeting or a virtual table that was all about cosplay and tips and how to do that and so people could dress up and come virtually to the convention in that way and i had decided to check out sid city because this thing it was small like i was I was on the internet every day, like, here's a bio for this person, and here's a bio for that person, and, you know, trying to create this hashtag, and I'm like, I don't know how any of this works, but we're going to give it a go, and I'm just, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to do it, and it's going to be great, and it was small, but, and so, you know, people were going to come, and it, it would have, was going to be fine, but then uh, I got on to talk to Alexander Siddig, just as part of Sid City, with no ulterior motives whatsoever, and he was, you know, what are you working on? And, oh, well, we're uh, experimenting with throwing our own virtual convention, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and he goes, wait, you're not charging people? And we're, No, we're just, it's just a space for people to come and do stuff. And he goes, oh, well, I, I would like to come. <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> and we're, so then we're like, okay, cool. Like, that's great and all, but, you know, that's the kind of thing you say on, on internet meetings and whatever. And it was a couple <laughs> days later, I got an email from Mel who leads, you know, Sid City. It's kind of her baby. She's the head of the fan club. Mm -hmm. And she goes, no, no, he wasn't kidding. Mm -hmm. He would like to come. Did you know that was a real offer? No, absolutely not. I did not know that was a real <laughs> offer. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's the minute he, he was doing that opening welcome panel, all of a sudden, Connected Con was a hashtag that actually showed up as a hashtag when you put it in. Twitter was like, do you mean Connected Con? And you yeah. can search it. And I was like, I yeah. hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. I've never done it since. But it was, it just became this thing that people really got behind. And it was a success because people wanted it to be. You know, So we yeah. created an idea and the community turned it into an event. Right. It was, it, it was spectacular. It was really wonderful. And we met people there. I, um, I know I, I said it VTC before, and I met Connected Community Con mm -hmm. because we met people there that then led to another convention for us with the seventh rule. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, and then we just met people all over the fandom that we're friends with to this day. And it all started that Connected Community Con was our very first official Sci Fi Sisters event. It was dope. Yep. It was awesome. So we have you guys to thank for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have you to thank because like I just said, it was people saying, yes, I will come to your tiny convention that will amount to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> turn it into a convention that was fun to be at. There wasn't that much of our content. You no. know, like it was it was a lot of work for you to like gather all those people mm -hmm. and do all that. But like we didn't actually like have that much time like sitting in front and like, you know, we did the yeah. intro. Um 
you know, and uh, did we do trivia for that one or the next one? I don't know. We remember. didn't do trivia for um, that one, but, but we did Ali uh, Martin T. Trekkie. We did do did a, panel, a panel and we mm -hmm. yeah, but... facilitated that. It was her panel. And we said, hey, this is Ali. Talk to Ali. She's great. And <laughs> we kind of ran that. But but it was all the people that said, yes, we'd love to do a panel and, and people like you that were, you know, Ran, had a you know, table actually, like yeah. you know drew some people in like that's that's what made it so magical is we were actually able to create a community by everyone kind of coming together and yeah making people some fun. started emailing me asking me if they could be part of it I was like wait how did you hear about this <laughs> <laughs> this is a little thing that we're doing but yeah absolutely fun. Uh, <laughs> is that out there in the ethernet can we can people find that could they look at it again or a lot of the videos are there were the two videos so ali's video and the chat with sid are on our on our, YouTube. our youtube channel the rest of it was all just it was conversations that happened people had video you know zoom, it was like zoom meetings zoom zoom yeah so their virtual mm -hmm. table and it's it's almost kind of beautiful that it was this undocumented thing you know people just got together and they interacted with each other and it wasn't at all about what are we going to do with it later it was just mm -hmm. an experience that folks had you and had then we did there. our later one mm -hmm. um, the vendors hall which was more of like hall. Yeah. Grab some, some licensees especially the smaller business licensees because there are a lot of small business people who have licenses let's kind of promote that but that was a whole day of panels you know so we had like stevie lee is a librarian who did inform a panel on information literacy and how to search for it and dr Noor did a panel with us about triple biology which was amazing so funny. <laughs> he's a funny damn fan uh, guy he's so funny sir, yeah he's he's amazing <laughs> isn't he you know? And all of those, those panels that people did, people there. created content for the day, those are available on our, our YouTube channel as well. And we got to have a conversation with Armin Shimmerman and Kitty Swink, so as we mentioned, we're theater designers. And so we had the opportunity to speak to the two of them because they're both very active in the theater community mm -hmm. about what theater had done or what COVID had done to theater and how different companies were trying to manage and you know how people really needed to be supporting artists because you know the pandemic was a really really difficult time for artists as well as you know every industry was hit really hard everybody was hit. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. but you know we got to that was talk a good panel about theater and that was just the coolest thing ever <laughs> yeah that was a really good panel too it was really wonderful so folks before we sign off here i want to make sure that everybody knows one more time where to go to get your triple because we just walked down memory lane it was great it was really good but i really want you guys to remember the triples are the main thing here they're awesome <laughs> they're the triples that they're need wonderful. homes the, the triples need homes. They're not going to reproduce. They're not going to take over your house. Even if you feed them wheat or anything else, they're not going to grow. The giants are, the giants are already full size. The baby, the, the little triples, they're just going to stay their regular size. For those who haven't seen, the regular size triples are eight inches across. So yeah, they're pretty most sizable. People think they are a massive triple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, people are like, "There's my, so there it is, there's my baby." No, I think yours is bigger than that. Oh yeah, yeah yours is much. Oh, yours is bigger. Than that. Yeah, yours. Oh, is you got one. one. Yeah, there's one over there. The giant one is really a giant one. Okay, I can put put. Oh, there you go. Oh, she'll go to bed with me. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be in the bed with me. There you go. Yeah. Did you name her already? I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> so where so where tell us one more time where people should go. Yep. So it's science div D I V dot com. Okay. And okay. and uh one more time about the special code. Uh sci fi sisters. And we'll throw in some Star Trek goodies with your triple. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad you guys could join us and stop by and tell people the story of Science Division and the story of the Tribbles. And, you know, the, they really do have an impact that's so much wider than you would think. You know, it's it's amazing what these little these little toys, these little pets have done. And uh, we thank you guys for being the creative minds behind them, you know. And the gumption. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a name. I just came up with a name. What is it? Uh -oh. Gumption. 
No. <laughs> Zora. Oh. Oh, 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 oh that's yes. a good one. That's that is really a good bad. one. That's and the be... Neil Hurston. Oh, yes, we have. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of discoveries of. Yeah, um, I know, but I know. Yeah, I love that. I, it yeah. works. It works on because it that's the beauty that of a truly after. great name. Yes, both it. discovery yeah. and yeah. the mm-hmm. author. Because you know that's where it comes from in Discovery too. It does. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's, what, exactly. yeah. Mm-hmm. that's a perfect name. I love yes. it. Yes, mm-hmm. Zora. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm okay. about to see. I gotta um, get on. I gotta get on here and order my Zora. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I know, friends. Like, let's wrap it up so I she can get to <laughs> type in science. I don't want anybody to get my Zora. No one's going to get your Zora. Okay. Okay. We have to one of our, one of ours. You, you've got a Zora. <laughs> so we want to know, guys, I know this is a special, but we're going to do it like we always do it. We want to know if uh, you have thoughts on naming your new triple, or if you have a triple, if you've adopted a triple already, what your do- triple's name is. So Yvette, where can people tell us that stuff? You can find us at sci-fi sisters.com. That's S-Y-F-Y-S-I-S-T-A-S dot com. Join us on the mothership. That's M-U-T-H-A-S-H-I-P and the Sci-Fi Sisters Book Club, both on Facebook. Download the Trek Geeks Network app where you can find us and our family of podcasts on the Trek Geeks Network. On Instagram and TikTok, sci-fi dot sisters. And we are also on that Twitter, at Sci-Fi Sisters. Become a patron of Sci-Fi Sisters today at patreon.com forward slash Sci-Fi Sisters. After listening to this podcast, please rate us and write a review. We may just read it on an upcoming episode. All right, that's it for us. We want to say we love you, Dose. Thank you, Dose. If you need engineering skills or music production skills, he is the man. He does all the music on our show as well as all of our production engineering. So he is Dose underscore the anonymous underscore the number one, 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 one. Uh, That's his handle on Instagram. We love you. Thanks for listening, y'all. Peace, love, and hair grease. 